Cricuto version 2.5 introduces a bird channel generator utility which can be used to create sticky channels based on existing channels in PRT files. Uh, these channels will uh, keep a value of uh, a particle channel uh, throughout the life of a particle uh, based on what value it had when it was born or based on a specific reference frame. In this uh, demo scene, we have a very simple particle flow setup uh, to test this uh, bird channel utility. Uh, in this particle uh, flow, we are emitting from a rectangular emitter, 100 by 100 units. We are emitting 50,000 particles, which are placed on the emitter, and then they get a random horizontal speed with variation. And since the variation is actually using a uh, random seed that matches exactly the random seed of the position, uh, neighbor particles are getting approximately the same variation and this creates a very distinctive pattern. If we change this to anything else it's going to completely explode and be completely uh, random but we want to keep this one because it kind of looks beautiful. After about 10 frames plus minus 5 uh, those particles are sent to a fine target event where they navigate through uh, a shape with a UV map on top and so then they dock on it. So after 50 frames all those particles have found their place on that mesh. And then we stop them and we'll save these particles to disk using Krikatoa. We'll open the Krikatoa user interface and then we'll switch it through save particles to file sequence. We'll pick a folder, we'll create a version 004 in my birth channel test uh, folder and I'll uh, use the default name particles. Uh, I don't need the normals or the color or the density but position, velocity and ID are good to have and I'm also going to add the age channel uh, because it's uh, useful to know uh, how long a particle has lived. At this point I can just switch my uh, active segment one, 0 to 50, that means 51 frames will be saved and then I uh, create a bunch of PAT files. Once the saving is done I will disable the particle flow. We can even assume that uh, the PAT sequence was given to us by somebody and we don't even have the particle flow. So at this point I have only a PRT sequence and a PRT loader. In this PRT loader I'll load these particles. I'll switch the display to 100%. And if I play back, I'm going to see those particles moving around. Let's assume that we actually want to map a uh, texture on these particles based on their position. I'm going to add a magma modifier. I'll open this magma modifier, set the output uh, to color, and the input will be a, a text map. So I'll pick a new texture and uh, I'll use this creek um, image uh, because it's uh, very green and distinctive. But nothing will actually appear on the particles because we don't have any UV coordinates saved in the particles themselves. We can generate our own texture coordinates and I'm going to use the position channel, but of course now the position is actually uh, repeating the same tile every unit. So if I divide this value by 100, which happens to be the size of the emitter that we had, it's going to give me the correct size, but it's offset by half tiles, so I'm going to subtract from this a vector with the values 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 for u and w, and now, I mean u and v, w will keep at 0, and at this point we uh, actually have our particles revealing that texture. But if I play back the animation, we're going to see that the particles are actually moving through the texture and revealing multiple tiles of this texture, especially if I look from top view, we're going to see this texture again and again in space because we're using the world space position right now of the particles and uh, this is not what we want. What we would like to have is the position where the particle was born should stick with the particle and be used to actually evaluate the texture map no matter where the particle went to. This is where the bird channel generator utility can help us. I can click here and say get me the Krakato safe path. This is the version 4 and it automatically proposes to use the position channel as input and create a new subfolder bird position with the same file name in it. I could theoretically create a velocity, bird velocity or uh, bird age but bird age makes no sense because bird age is always zero. 
So we'll be using the ID channel to track the particles between the frames and keep the data consistent. And we'll be using the base frame zero, uh, which is generally the birth time at this point. So if I hit this uh, generate button, the external uh, birth channel generate utility will be launched in the background and it is going to uh, create these files in the folder. But in the meantime, I can go and update my PAT loader, remove this uh, previous sequence and add the new sequence. And when I add this new sequence, now I have a birth channel, which I'm not using yet. I'm still using the position, so the particles are still floating through uh, the texture. But if I type in birth in front of a position, then I'll be using the sticky channel, which is uh, on every frame exactly the same, where the particle was born. And now the colors are actually sticking to the particle and moving with it. Of course, when we end up on that shape, since the positions are completely random, we also have a random jumbo of colors. It would be nice to actually have a second texture that reveals a different uh, bitmap there. So let's create an input texture and pick a different bitmap. For example, we can grab a cityscape and we'll turn the forest into the city over time. So we'll use a function blend to blend the two uh, textures together. The second texture though uh, doesn't have any uh, texture coordinates either. And we cannot use just world space positions. We are going to steal the UV coordinates of that shape where the particles landed. So I'm going to expose the texture cards input and I will uh, actually create uh, a nearest point operator. This nearest point operator will be uh, looking for uh, geometry, in this case our uh, meshed ellipse. I'll pick it in the scene and I'll also need a lookup point and the lookup point has to be another bird position but not the bird position at birth, the bird position at uh, docking time which in our case is frame 50. So if I go to frame 50 and set the dialog to actually use the base uh, frame 50, I can go here and say I want to create a new birth position too, but actually uh, before I do this, I'm going to copy the output uh, path that we used before into the input. So we'll be doing another iteration using the previous output as the new input, and then we'll add two here. And now we have a subfolder with birth positions and another subfolder with birth position two in addition to the birth position. So we'll uh, do another iteration and add another channel. Now we see that it's actually writing backwards. It wrote the frame 50 first and it's propagating the information backwards in time because it needs to use the uh, base frame 50. If we had used base frame 25, it would uh, propagate in both directions in time, forward and backward. So at this point, we actually have a second uh, file sequence with a second bird channel. We can go and add this additional bird position true, and we'll remove the first sequence, uh, which had only the one channel. That means that our lookup point here, I'm going to uh, grab a copy of this, and I'll uh, paste it behind here and connect to the input. And all I have to do, is instead of using bird position, I'll type in bird position. True. Now we are looking uh, for the nearest point on the surface of this uh, geometry and we'll need a face query in order to steal its texture coordinates. So we say texture coordinates, we add it to the list, we remove the position and we connect those texture coordinates to the cityscape input bitmap. And because we're blending with a value of zero, we are only displaying the forest. And if we go and uh, switch it to one, we're going to get our second texture there. But if we go back to the beginning, we're going to see a, a jumbo of blue colors. So we need to create a blend over time, starting with the forest and going into the city. How I'll do this? We could, of course, use the age. And we know that the age is uh, in... Uh, seconds so after 30 frames we'll have a value of 1 and we can of course clamp this value function clamp between 0 and 1 and we could also divide it by uh, the duration that we want for example one and a half seconds is probably a good uh, measure for the time 
So if we uh, start moving now, our particles will start green and then slowly turn into the cityscape colors and then dock already in that color. However, this is based on time and all the particles were born at the same time and it's almost like actually using the time slider. Instead of using the age to control the blending, let's use the uh, distance from the bird position to uh, the current position of the particle. <coughs> so we're going to normalize this. We're going to uh, create a subtraction from the bird position true. We'll subtract the bird position one. Then we're, we're going to take the vector magnitude. And then we're going to divide by this value another vector which will be the position, uh, the current position of the particle. And uh, from this position, we're going to uh, subtract the bird position and the vector magnitude. Before we do this, we're actually going to connect the divide, which will be our control for the blending factor. Right now, the flow is not valid because this position here is not a valid uh, floating point number. It's actually a vector. So we'll need to subtract position and bird position, then do a vector magnitude from this value, Vm, and uh, now we have a division, and if we take a look at the result, we have now the particles slowly changing the color, but based on the distance uh, from the bird place, the farther they go, the more they turn into a city. If we wanted to change the bias, we could select this uh, output of the divide and add, uh, for example, a curve operator or a power operator. If we add the power operator and expose a uh, factor, for example, 2, uh, we could use this to change uh, how quickly they're turning from green to blue. Now we see that they're green for much longer. And if we change this even further, they will be uh, even greener. At 1, they have the original quality, and 0 0.3, for example, they will turn into city much earlier. So we, uh, we can go really down to 0 0.15, probably, and then we already have half of the particles already moved uh, far away and turning into the city. 